Microsoft Excel is one of the most commonly used business applications today to import, process, and analyze data. There are many jobs that require passing of Excel assessment test as part of the hiring process. In this video, I'll show you a simple Excel test question from this test. I'll give you answers and explanations, and I'll show you next step to get you prepared for Excel proficiency test. Here is the question that tests your knowledge of how well you know data integration and how well can you write formulas that reference other worksheets in Microsoft Excel. Which formula can be used to get value of a cell A1 from the sheet named value sheet? And then there is an example, uh, value from the value sheet, right? And you have four choices. Uh, in the first choice, you use value sheet name, exclamation mark A1. In the choice B, you have value sheet minus A1. Choice C, value sheet at A1, and there's no space here, so got to keep that uh, in mind too. And then choice D is a value sheet with the space, and then you have exclamation mark A1. So choices D and A look very similar, but this one has um, single quotes around the value sheet, uh, and uh, choice A doesn't have single quotes. So what do you think is the right answer here? As you can see here in uh, Excel itself, uh, the correct choice is in single quotes, value sheet, exclamation mark A1. So let me walk you through the, the logic here. So we have value sheet tab, right? But because the sheet name has a space, you need to include it into single quotes. And then to reference the value, you put always put exclamation mark and then the cell A1, which if we navigate to value sheet would be a uh, value right from here from A1. And there's a practice sheet for you. So you can uh, download this Excel workbook. Uh, just follow the link in the description of this video so you can practice this uh, particular exercise on your own and uh, come up with answers from value sheet as well. And as we go back to the document, you see that the correct choice is value sheet in single quotes A1, which is choice D. And it explains here why other choices uh, are incorrect and uh, what's going to happen if you use those. In the case of uh, value sheet A1, it's going to show an error uh, because you cannot use space. And if you use space in the sheet name, then it has to be in single quotes. This one is just a name, a minus. It's a formula ultimately, but there's nothing here referencing value sheet minus A1. So it's going to be an error. And value sheet without the space, colon A1 is also incorrect because uh, colon is not the right reference to reference the sheet. So I am pretty sure you got this one correctly. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you know someone who is getting ready for interview or Excel assessment test, please share this video with them. This is going to help them pass and get their dream job. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's see how well you know Excel data formatting uh, feature, specifically for custom formatting. Here is the question. Which number format will display the cell A2 as uh, January? And there are four choices. 4Ms-YY, B4Ms, uh, C3Ms, and then D5Ms. Which one do you think is the right one? If we look in Microsoft Excel, we're looking to convert from this date, which is in cell A2, to the value that would be in the cell E. And I'm already uh, disclosing you the answer. So which is January, which is correct, right? And you know, the B is correct answer now. But how we got here, let's take a look. To uh, navigate from this cell E2 and see what kind of formatting is being used here, we click on the types of the format and then click on the more number formats. And we see that this is a custom format that's being used and it shows four M's. And what you see here, there's a sample box here, right, in this dialog box. And there are multiple ways to get to this particular dialog box. But if you have four M's, then you will get January. If you get three M's, for example, you will only get three letters of the months. And if it's a five M's, you will only get J. So the key is to know the correct answer here. Uh, if we click OK, you see the other choices. A, for example, uh, would lead us to this type of answer. B is the correct choice. C is three letters. And uh, uh, D would be just uh, one letter J for the month of January. And uh, as always, in the same worksheet, uh, I have a practice area where you can just take the data here and uh, practice and have your own formats. Uh, ready, so make sure to take advantage of this. You can download the practice worksheet uh, by following the link in the description of this video. Going back to the question, the correct answer is B, and the other answers on the list just designed to trick you. And now let's look at some other Excel interview and assessment test questions you may encounter during the test. 
Now let's look at the Excel test question that is frequently used at LinkedIn or Indeed.com or other types of tests and uh, tests your knowledge of number formatting. How would you modify the cell so that the cell containing the value 8.856 displays as 9? And you have four choices. Click Decrease Decimal button twice. Click Decrease Decimal button three times. Click Increase Decimal button twice. And then use Round function. Which one do you think is the right choice? One thing I'd like to point out here in these types of questions, we only change in display value and it shows displays as nine. So we're not trying to change the actual value here. So keep that in mind as you think of the right answer. So in Microsoft Excel in the home tab in the number section, there are two buttons. One button you have increased decimal and another button is decreased decimal points. I'm going to jump to the correct answer right away, uh, which is decrease decimal point uh, button three times. That's what you need to click. So if we go here and then we click not increase button, but decrease decimal points and we click it three times, then we get to the value nine as it, it decreases this three digits after the dot. And uh, we have this final value of nine after clicking it three times. And there are also uh, other choices displayed here and results uh, that they lead to, for example, display value adjustment, decrease decimal button twice, so we still have dot nine after the dot, right? Or increase, we're actually adding two zeros, or using the round function, which is, in our case, we're not changing just the display value, we're changing the underlying value itself. And obviously, there are some practice exercises for you, so you can download this worksheet and practice with the link right in the description of this video. And as you might have figured out by now, the correct answer is B, which is click decrease uh, decimal button three times. And uh, other choices are incorrect. And uh, here uh, I show the reasons why they're incorrect. And we just covered them in uh, Microsoft Excel. Hopefully you've got this one right. A lot of you are interested in asking me, how can I help others? One of the ways you can help other people is by sharing the latest questions that you see on Excel interview and assessment test and how you answer them. Please share the questions you recently encountered in the comments section of this video. If you know the answers, please share them as well. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is the question to test your knowledge of Excel formulas and functions. Which function will return the largest value from cell range A2 through A5? And if you look in the print from the screenshot that we see A2 through A5, they contain four digit numbers. And there are four choices that you have maximum for the same range, large for the same range, comma A1, max A2 through A5, and then upper A2 through A5. Which one do you think is the right choice? And uh, as you're probably well aware, you can type the uh, function max by yourself manually uh, by putting the cursor here and then typing max and then selecting the values from this range a2 through a5 and this will calculate after you close the parenthesis or if i delete this or undo using the quick toolbar you can also put the cursor here and select the auto sum and max is one of the functions that used in auto sum and then uh, it by default offers you the larger range but when you're looking through a2 through a5 and then you hit enter and it calculates the value so as you can see the correct choice here is c but other functions here on the list some of them do not exist, like an example of the maximum function. Large will give you an error because there is an extra argument here, so it's not going to get you the right answer. And upper is used for converting text uh, to uppercase, so, which is not the right choice uh, here. So hopefully you got this one right. A lot of people ask, how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question that you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. It is very unlikely that you will get away on the test without having a question on VLOOKUP function or its replacements index uh, and match or question that will test your knowledge of offset function. So let's look at one of those questions that you might get. Which function can return the cell value which calculates the number of rows and columns away from a base cell? And you have four choices uh, which sound familiar. Index, VLOOKUP, offset, and match. Which one do you think is the right one? As you might have figured out by now, the correct function is offset. And if you look here in the syntax, it has three required values, reference, rows, and columns. So we have a reference, which is cell A2, 
and then we need to do offset by two rows and then do an offset by one column so the correct version of the formula uh, will look like this offset then we have base reference a2 two rows and one column and what's going to happen it will take this as a base cell and it will calculate location of the new cell which would be b4 in our calculations and it will bring the value from b4 into the cell a6 so once i hit enter it brought the value correctly into the cell a6 going back to our original question you see that the choice c is offset which is the correct choice uh, here and you can see that index function is not correct vlookup function is also not correct and the match function would be incorrect as well because it matches an indexes position of a match uh, in a given row or a column range i'm pretty sure you got this one right this was a tough one this is more of the advanced question and uh, you need to have a knowledge of index vlookup match and offset and kind of understand the differences between those four choices if you would like to take a shortcut and get ready for excel interview and assessment test faster make sure to check out my ebook. In this ebook, we cover top 50 Excel interview and assessment test questions. I provide you with the answers. We focus on the keyboard shortcuts that most frequently are tested as part of the test. I share with you some important considerations how you can get ready for the test faster, best ways to get prepared, tips and tricks of what to do during the exam day, how to best manage your time taking the exam, and a lot of other tips, tricks, and hacks for answering multiple choice questions. To download ebook, make sure to use the link in the description of this video to take advantage of discounted price I offer to my subscribers. Let's look at this question, which you might see as part of Indeed assessment test or LinkedIn assessment test. How would you add a chart in a cell to show sales data for the last 12 months? And then there are four choices that you're presented with. Add an image of the chart in the cell, add comments and add chart to that, hyperlink to the chart on another sheet, and then the last one, add a spark line, a graphic that shows a cell's graph. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? Let's look at this Microsoft Excel example. You have a table which has the product names, uh, Apple iPhone and MacBook Air, and then you have month in a year from January until December with certain sales values. And then you have a space here in one cell where you would need to insert a chart. The best way to represent the data of the sales from January until December would be sparkline. To insert a sparkline, you put the value of the cursor on the cell where you would like to insert it. Then you click on insert. And in the sparkline section, there are three different choices for sparkline. So let's start with line. You choose a line and then you select the range, which would calculate the value of sparkline. And then you put the location range, which is in our case is 04, so which is correct. And we can click OK. And you see that uh, Excel inserted the spark line. Another way to insert spark line would be to uh, use a bar chart spark line, which is a little bit different. Let's go ahead and do it. To do it, we'll put a cursor into the cell 05 and then go to insert spark line and we'll call it column spark line. And then we'll select the range in the row 5. And then we'll confirm that location would be 05. Click OK. And then you see that this is the bar spark line or column spark line. Now you have different styles here. You see that the context sensitive menu appeared for spark line. And you have different choices. You can indicate high point, negative point, and uh, use other features, maybe marker color. So play with those features as you answer the questions. You can always download the practice file, which I give with this uh, set of questions. So make sure to take advantage of that so you can have a way. And there is a room for you for the practice files right here in this uh, tab in Excel. As you might have figured by now, the correct answer is D, which is add sparkline, a graphic that shows uh, in the cell graph. Now, adding an image would not look good as it's not going to be legible. So that's not a valid choice. You also need to understand that the comments in Excel do not have ability to add the charts. And then hyperlinking defeats the purpose of the question as we're supposed to add chart in the cell. So make sure to pick a spark line as a valid choice for this type of question. Hope you've got it right. Now let's look at the typical questions that tests your knowledge of Excel formatting features. Which option can we use if the text in the cell is being cut off and we want to see all the text without increasing the width of the column. And there are four choices, wrap text, wrap column, change alignment, and then fill handle. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right answer? 
if text in Microsoft Excel is longer than the cell itself, for example, in the case of cell A5, it continues to flow in the same row. The best way to address this is the wrap text feature. You just need to put your cursor into the specific cell and then click wrap text. And once you do that, the entire text will fit as Microsoft Excel was extend the cell to fit the size of the text. So this is the wrap feature and I also have some practice exercises for you. So make sure to download this uh, practice workbook so you can practice uh, answering this question. So the correct answer here is A, which is wrap text. And let's look at other choices that have been presented here in the questions, wrap column, change alignment, and then fill handle, and why they're not the right choices. So wrap column is not a valid feature in Microsoft Excel, and then changing the alignment will only move the alignment of the text, and uh, some text will still be cut off. And then fill handle is used to drag formulas or cell content down, and it's not going to help us. So those uh, choices presented uh, B through D are just designed to trick you, and hopefully you pick the right one which is the A wrap text. Why you might consider subscribing to this channel. This is one of the fastest way to learn and get prepared for Excel assessment test. Skills you learn are helpful today and in the future. You get answers to your questions. You have opportunity to help other people. And you have experienced professionals who already subscribed to this channel and ready to help you with any answers that you need. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the question uh, which tests your knowledge of Microsoft Excel charts and graphs. Which chart among the option is the best for showing time-based data? And the key here is time-based data. So as always with any questions related to Microsoft Excel and Excel test, just pay to every little uh, detail on the question itself. And we have four choices, column chart, bar chart, radar chart, and then line chart. Which one would you choose? Which one do you think is the right option? Let's look at some considerations and a little description of the charts, which might be helpful. So column chart creates a bar for each data point. Similar like a column chart, the bar chart also creates a bar for each line of the data. And then radar chart is used for demonstrating the data in two dimensions. Now let's go into Excel and look at how would we pick the right answer among these four choices. So the correct answer is line chart. And the reason it is a correct answer is because that's the chart that best represents uh, quantities sold over time. So let's look at the, how you can add the line chart here. So you select the data range, you navigate to insert, and then you pick the line chart tab, and then you have uh, multiple different choices. And then you basically will format the chart after you inserted the type that you like. To this chart on the screen, I added the background, I made the line a little bit thicker, but you see that uh, through January through June, it shows the quantities uh, that have been sold and how they increase over time. And uh, the important point is it's not a cumulative number of um, units sold, it just increases over time. So you see in January we had two items sold, and in June it increased uh, to five items sold per day. And that's what this chart shows. We go from two to five. And keep in mind, there is a practice chart for you. So you can practice uh, generation of the chart and make sure to download this uh, practice worksheet. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint slide and I'll explain you why other choices were not the correct choices. So as you have figured it out by now, the correct answer is D, which is the line chart. And then uh, the reason it's the correct answer because other choices are incorrect and that's definitely the best way to display time-based data. So what we know is that column chart creates individual bars uh, and it's not good for displaying time-based data. And bar chart does the same. And then radar chart is best used for comparing the data and it's not a good choice for displaying time-based data. So correct choice is D, line chart. Hopefully you've got it right. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up to tell us that you need more content like this. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Let's look at the question that tests your knowledge of uh, Microsoft Excel formulas and functions. One of the options presented is not like the others. Find the odd one. So which one would you choose? Option A, we have some function. B, also some function, but lists the value. Then you have choice C, which is uh, we adding five values and then choice D, which is uh, sum of B2 comma B6. So which one do you think is the right choice here? What's interesting about this question, it's designed to confuse you. 
the question designed to confuse you because three of the answers do have some function and answer choice C does not have the sum function. So you might be leaning toward this one because it's an odd one, right? But really the question is looking at the results and your knowledge of Microsoft Excel formulas and functions. For example, sum B2 of and B6 will lead you to one certain answer, same as choice B, which is the sum B2, B5, B4, B1, and B6, right? So same range B2 to B6, uh, which would lead you to the right answer interesting thing is that the odd one is the one that doesn't lead to the same sum of the values to the same result which is choice d because in that choice only two values are being added b2 and b6 in all other options in all other uh, choices a through c all b2 through b6 which is b2 b3 b4 b5 and b6 values are being added and then it results in the sum so the odd one here is choice d and it is the odd one because it only adds two choices instead of adding all five choices. Hopefully you've got this one right because that was a tricky one. I'd like to ask you to participate in our daily Excel assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of this channel and give you an opportunity to answer this and try it. And I post the answer in the comments next day. So please make sure to check it out and test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here is Excel test questions to help better understand your knowledge of the user entries. How can you restrict users to only select the options from drop down on a specific cell or range? And then there are four choices, conditional formatting, data validation, protect worksheet, protect workbook. Which one do you think is the right one? Data validation is the feature of Excel that used to restrict the values for the particular cell. For example, in the cell B8, if I click the drop-down box, you see only the choices, uh, five choices of the products listed uh, in the column A here. And they all gathered from the cells A2 through A6. To configure data validation, you need to select the cell and then go to Data tab and click on the Data Validation. And then based on the choices I've used to configure, uh, we allow values from the list. So that's my uh, limitation that I only allow users to do the list. And then the source range is A2 through A6 which exactly matches uh, here values of Apple iPhone to PS4. So as you might have figured out, uh, the correct choice is data validation because other choices are designed to trick you. Like conditional formatting is used to format cells based on a specific condition. Worksheet protection is used to restrict user from editing a range or a cell. And then workbook protection is used for restricting users from altering the workbook structure. So B is the correct choice. Hopefully you've got this one right. So can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please post in the comments of this video to share with others. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Thanks for watching. Hope you have learned something and had fun at the same time. Please make sure to check out my other relevant videos. I know they helped a lot of people and I'm pretty sure they will help you as well. Please consider premium resources from our ebook store at howtoanalyzedata.net it has tons of resources to help you get ready for the interview and assessment test. Also, please make sure to check out for relevant downloads in the description of this video. If you find a mistake in my recommendations, please do not judge us too harshly, as we are only trying to help, but mistakes are unavoidable. Please post the correct answer in the comment section of this video to help people succeed in the test. Take a moment and click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen and make sure to like, share, comment, and ask me any questions. I am happy to answer every question I receive. All the best on your interview and assessment test.